Right, the insurance company State Farm recently launched a program that would enlist hundreds of staff, volunteers across the country to distribute LGBTQ-themed books to teachers, community centers, centers, and libraries, targeting children as young as kindergarten. Now, according to a whistleblower email obtained by Consumer Research, the initiative aims to, quote, bring clarity and understanding to the national conversation about being transgender, inclusive, and non-binary, end quote. Is this like a good neighbor or more like a creepy neighbor grooming children? Joining me now to discuss this is Will Hild. He is the executive director of Consumer Research, which recently launched an advertisement campaign targeting State Farm for this and other woke activism projects. Will, glad to have you on the program. Thanks for having me. So the work that your organization does in this area, I have to say, is so critical because we've got to hold these corporations accountable for what they're doing. How did the State Farm Initiative come to your attention? Well, a, risk, a whistleblower from within the company reached out to us, uh, provided us emails where State Farm had requested that agents in Florida and it's applied uh, nationwide were asked to buy a bundle of three books from something called the Gender Gender Cool Project, which is a radical transgender uh, lobbyist group, um, and donate them to local libraries and community centers, but notably local public schools. So this would be books explicitly written for kindergartners, uh, donated about transgenderism, about being, being non-binary, uh, donated without parents' knowledge to local public schools. And in the email, it talks about wanting to start a conversation with children as young as five on these issues, which, as you noted, uh, State Farm says that they're a, a good neighbor. That's something a creepy neighbor does. And so we decided to launch this campaign to call out State Farm, to educate customers, but notably to educate parents to make sure that their kids were not approached by State Farm with these materials, uh, and if they were, to, to remedy that. All right, Will, Washington Watch is a, uh, is a Christian program. We're on nonprofit stations uh, across the country. So I, I, I give that context as I ask you this next question. Can you tell us about the books without being too graphic as what's contained in these books? Certainly, I certainly can. So uh, we obtained copies of, of these books, and they are written in the, from the first person as someone who identifies as transgender, who is themselves underage, and, and someone who identifies as non-binary, who themselves is underage. So this is written from a child's perspective, targeting uh, even younger children. Uh, as, as I said, the, the book itself says it's ages five plus, so that's kindergartner age. And it describes um, the process of realizing that they were, uh, quote unquote, assigned the wrong gender at birth by doctors. It replaces the textbook definition of sex, of course, male and female, uh, with uh, something that's subjective, that's based on how one feels. And so, and it implies, so it implies, it states that, you know, you might want to question whether you're actually a, a boy or a girl if you simply, you know, are a boy who likes to play with dolls or a girl who likes to play sports. These are examples given of things that might tip you, tip one off, tip a, a kindergartner off, uh, that they were assigned the wrong gender at birth by uh, physicians or, or their parents. So um, that's the content of, of the books. I mean, why in the world will we be having these conversations with five-year-olds unless there was a bigger purpose here? I mean, and I know there's all this criticism about using this term, this term grooming, but I, I can't see it as any other way than preparing them for this whole sexual um, ideology that is enveloping our kids before they even need to talk about this stuff. Absolutely. We think it's bizarre and disgusting. We were appalled uh, when the whistleblower produced the materials. We're thankful that they, they came to us. But of course, uh, we were shocked. Um, in fact, I spent a good amount of time verifying that the documents were real, uh, first of all, because we were so, you know, we wanted to make sure uh, before we came out and, and made this clear that State Farm had actually been doing this and we were able to confirm it. And it's, it's some of the agents that we reached out to in order to confirm that this email had gone to them as well, uh, they had not seen it. It had gone to their, you know, they had skipped over it or something like that. At first they said, oh no, our company would never send something like that. And then they went back and searched their inbox and sure enough, and they themselves were appalled and shocked. So it's 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 almost inexplicable 
what would lead a company to think it was appropriate to approach kindergartners with conversations around sexual identity? Um, there's almost no words for how disgusting that is. Uh, Will, final question for you. Have you heard from any schools or public libraries that have received these books? Do you know how uh, far they've gone with the distribution yet? Well, uh, we ourselves have not, uh, but in, in doing research, we found posts of teachers at schools. I think there's one, uh, Seabury School, where uh, they posted that they part that they received these books as a partnership from, between State Farm and the Gender Cool Project. They listed the names of the books, uh, uh, the titles, um, and uh, uh you know, admitted that, that State Farm was the one that purchased the book. So we do know that these have made it into at least one school. All right. Uh, Will, we're going to keep in close contact with you because I really appreciate the work that you're doing in hope, holding corporate America accountable for this wokeism uh, that is targeting our, our children. Uh, I just wish they would do business. Just whatever it is they do, do the business and leave our kids alone. Uh, Will, again, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Tony. As we were just discussing this project by State Farm, it's corporate America is just, they're so bad. And I think, look, we need to be bold. We need to be aggressive. We need to be informed and we need to take action. And here's one thing that you can do. And I've already talked to some people who have done this uh, as this story just broke today is call your, if you have State Farm insurance, call your agent. There's a good possibility. In fact, I would say it's probable that they don't even know about this, even though it is a nationwide push by State Farm. But here's what happens when you get these, uh, we, we had this, uh, ah, it's been a while back, but I think it seems, it seems like it was uh, Ford did something crazy. And uh, we, uh, we, we, encourage people to contact their local dealers, and the dealers were outraged by this because it didn't reflect their values. And so they called corporate, and they then backed off of this. So this is the type of stuff you need to take action. Get angry, yes, but take action. And be obviously be uh, civil when you talk to them, but say, why in the world is State Farm grooming our children with teaming up with this LGBT group? Now, let me just ask you this. I'm going to quote... And, uh, and Will uh, actually made reference to this. Uh, this was a statement by State Farm, quote, the project's goal is to increase representation of LGBTQ plus books and support our communities in having challenging, important, and empowering conversations with children age five plus. That's what the email said. So I, I began to think about this. I was reading. I wonder if they would be okay giving these uh, five-plus-year-olds' Bibles and having important and empowering conversations with these children about God and how he made them. Oh, they would go berserk. In fact, they did. We had to remove the Bibles from the school because children are impressionable, and we can't have conversations about religion because their young minds are impressionable. But we can talk to them about sexual perversion? Come on. This is too much. We've got to draw the line, a bright, bold line, and say enough is enough. This is sexual perversion, and they're doing this to our children. They won't allow us to talk about religion, about who created them, and their eternity, and where they're going to spend it, and how they should live their lives according to what Scripture says, and according to what has dominated Western civilization, but they can have conversations about sexual perversion? Look, if you have State Farm, I encourage you to call your State Farm agent and ask them, what, what are you guys doing? 